Hello guys, welcome to my today's video how to create your own bookmarks navigation website why I want to create this kind of website since our browser already have bookmarks function there are a couple of reasons first, convenient I can access my bookmarks collection from anywhere if I have this kind of website second, sharing if I have this kind of website, I can share my bookmark collection with my friends, my family, in all over the world. Last but not least, privacy. If I have this kind of website, I would like to set up private option to set up a category which I only can access it by entering a password. I looked up from a GitHub website and found some great project here is the one one nav it meet all my needs also it is easy to deploy let's start to create it this is github project address hello xz slash one nav if you scroll down you will see the web interface, features, installation steps, demo, and how to contact and the contributions. Uh, you may see all of the Chinese actually using the Google Translate or Chinese text going to be translated to English. Look at those features, support background management, private link, batch import from bookmarks. So basically, you can download your Chrome bookmarks and then import it support multiple scenes, support automatic identification of link information, also support API. The installation step is it's, uh, my favorite, using the doc deployment. We already have our container docker deployed in my previous lab, which is for the downloading website. So we're going to use the same website and going to add this docker in. There's some demo. You can take a look at how it looks like the web UI. I did one more thing is I translated the web interface from Chinese to English. And I built my own Docker Hub repository image. So 51 nav. I create my own. So basically, I translated all web UI from Chinese to English, which you can use it, even including the back end at the main page. So you can use this Docker image directly. Step one, you may want to have the environment ready. When I say the environment, I mean you may need to have your own VPS. If you don't have your own VPS, you might look at my previous video to get the free VPS from Oracle Cloud. Also, you need to install Docker. You need to install Pertainer to manage your Docker. You need to install Nginx. You need to have your own uh, domain. But uh, if you don't have Nginx on domain, that also will be fine. Um, then you will use in the IP address to access your Docker. But I would strongly suggest you to get your own domain since uh, it's a free domain to apply for it. You can look at my video description to get those links, how to get your free VPS, how to get your free domain. And also you can see my previous video, how to configure Docker on your Linux, how to configure Nginx as a reverse proxy. Step two, we're going to copy the docker run command. You can use pertainer to do that, but uh, it's the same thing, basically. So let's do this one right now. Previously, I already built my own pertainer container, and I also have Watchtower to do automatic update. I have my downloading website, area 2, 
running as well. And uh, Nginx is running here as a reverse proxy. So after you've made all those changes, what you need to do next, I've just pasted that configuration here and paste to here, enter. You will see your Linux VPS is starting to pull a new image from join 2 slash 51 now. After a couple of seconds, the pulling image finished and the land container has been brought up. Now we can go back to our container page. Before I refresh, that's what I have, those four containers. But once I refresh here, we should be able to see the new one, one now. One thing I changed, I'm going to use 8100 port since that's the one I exposed to the internet. Let's check my VPS internet. IP address. If you watched my previous video, you know I already deployed my own website to check my IP address, internet IP, just by using curl or wget. You can get your VPS public IP. That's in my previous video as well. So 8100 is a one we are using the port may be not opened since uh, this is new so we need to go to our firewall settings to open port 8100 this is oracle cloud vps dashboard you can see i'm using network security groups i'm using linux dash sg dash one what we can do is click on it and add a new port. I have a bunch of port opened before. Now I need to add a new port, 8100. Source type it will be CIDR. Source CIDR will be all internet. Protocol will be TCP. Destination port will 8100. This is for bookmark navigation website. Now we are able to access it. All web page has been changed to English right now, uh, mostly probably some small things I still need to work on. This is the back end to log in. Those are default four websites for, from the original author for this program, shall that blog. We're gonna configuring our subdomain for this website. We're gonna go to our DNS management website, just add a record, which is a record. We're using bookmark as our subdomain, IP address, save. We create our subdomain. Now we're gonna use in Nginx as a reverse proxy to access this website. Go to Pertainer. Go to Nginx. Connect our Nginx. Nginx folder. Conf folder. So I already have a couple of configuration being created before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy one of them to my bookmark, and then we can start into edit it. Port still will be 80. This is gonna be changed to. Since we are using subdomain bookmark to 51 sec.org, we are using one nav, the internal container name to access to it. Internal container, they are using port 80. 8100 is the one exposed to internet. So after we set it up, we can close that port. Actually, we don't need 
that 8100 to be open to public. Save it. And uh, restart as NGX service. Before we change that, we have one small thing we need to do. Let's quit from here. We have to change our containers network settings. We have um, our own network, which is my bridge network. We will need our new container joint network. So our Nginx container can you can use the container name to access to it. So let's join network. We can leave the default bridge network. Now let's go back to Nginx containers console to restart the service. Brilliant. There's one small mistake I made on my subdomain list is 226 save it let's give it try http works we can now see the website is up and running on the your domain right now we can log in using our default username password which we created in our docker run command admin password of course you're gonna change it after you log in for now i'll just keep it so now you can see you can access front end and then you can change your categories right now there's only two categories you can add more categories here so all has been translated to English, um, but what I did is uh, just make sure most of the code has been translated to English if there's some Chinese there. You can add your link and also you can import your bookmarks if you download it from your Google Chrome bookmarks, then you can import it. You can import to certain categories. So now the website is up and running. That's pretty much everything I want to share with you today. I'm hoping you like it. And, and also you can create your own bookmark navigation website for yourself and for your friend. Please give me a thumb up and also subscribe my channel if you haven't.